Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of Kiri Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anut Sonpal from Valorem Advisors. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anut Sonpal from Valorem Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations of Kiri Industries Limited. On behalf of the company, I'd like to thank you all for the com uh, participating in the company's earnings call for the first quarter of financial year 2023. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement as always. Some of the statements made in today's con call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. I would now like to uh, introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We firstly have with us Mr. Manish Kiri, Managing Director, Mr. Jay Shirani, Senior Manager of Accounts and Finance, and Mr. Suresh Gandolia, Company Secretary. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Manish Kiri to start with his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the earnings conference call for the first quarter of financial year 2023. I hope you are all keeping safe and well. In the quarter under review, dies and dies intermediate industry experienced sluggish demand and unprecedented increase in input costs, including raw materials, power, gas, and fuel. During the last two financial years, with demands at rock bottom, which is the worst in around three decades, three major reasons identified by industry experts for negative growth in demand are increase in raw material prices, dumping of dyes, intermediates, and dyes from China globally, and around 65% surge in cotton prices during quarter four, 2022. Compelling industry players to revisit business strategies for sustainability and to overcome unprecedented cash losses. Um, especially for Kiri, there has been a significant legal cost also incurred in the current quarter. During quarter one to FY23, Kiri Industries Limited attained consolidated sales revenue of 277 crore, lower by 6% year on year basis, and a beta loss of 8 crore. Net loss for quarter one, 23 was 26 crores versus a net profit of 9 crore in quarter four, 22. Kiri shares of 40% in Longshin Kiri um, yielded a revenue of 105 crore and a beta of 23 crore for quarter one FY23 in consolidated financials of Kiri. During the quarter, Kiri attained standalone sales revenue of 171 crore, lower by 14% on year on year basis, and a beta was negative 31 crore. The reduction in sales resulted into under absorption of fixed costs generating negative margins during the quarter. The net loss for the quarter was 28 crores. The major reasons for negative abeta was unprecedented volatility in prices of raw materials, much higher legal cost, lower capacity utilization due to lack of demand, substantial increase in conversion costs on account of increasing cost of power and fuel, and most importantly, not being able to pass on the cost increases to its finished goods products, sales prices. Dyes intermediates, dye stuff, and basic chemicals contributed 48%, 39%, and 13% respectively to quarter one FY23 revenues, as again 67%, 28%, and 5% respectively in quarter four FY22. In quarter one FY23 has been an exceptional quarter which we hope and expect to reverse in coming quarters. We envisage improvements in gross margins in coming quarters with increase in turnover 
and by attaining optimum product mix. The sluggish demand and volatile raw material prices have increased the payment cycle and reduced to some extent inventory churning. The company expects liquidity to smoothen in coming quarters and the payable cycle shall come down to 90 days in coming two to three quarters. Industry expects cotton prices to 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 get established in, in to in, in stabilize in the next two quarters, enabling demand for dyes to pick up. Raw material prices are also expected to stabilize, enabling manufacturing units to regain operational margins, which are currently in negative zone. Kiri has been monitoring the global dye market and has taken steps to mitigate sluggish demand and reduce cash losses during quarter one FY23. In the coming quarters, after taking cognizance of market dynamics, Kiri shall strive optimum product mix to enhance overall margins, enabling the company to absorb its fixed overheads and take a leap forward to achieve normalized revenue and a beta in coming quarters. In the coming months, Kiri management shall leave no stone unturned and turn to recoup and normalize its core business of dyes, dyes intermediates and basic chemicals, and also look at the business opportunities to enhance intrinsic value of its stakeholders in Kiri. In the matter of Dye Star, where Kiri holds 37.57% equity stake, Senda International Capital Limited's appeals have been dismissed fully by, by Supreme Court of Singapore, and Kiri has prevailed on the issues on the two issues in the Supreme Court with regards to discount for lack of marketability and the quantum of notional license fees payable by Longshin to Dystar for its wrongful exploitation of the patent. Both of these issues were overturned in Kiri's favor. Hence, 19% of DLOM shall not be applicable while deciding final valuation number of Kiri's stake in Dystar and amount of notional license fees shall be crystallized based on the available evidences to Singapore International Commercial Court. SICC shall now decide final uh, valuation number of Kiri State after giving, giving an effect of DLOM and patent license fees. Further, court has ordered Senda to pay Kiri cost of $180,000 for Senda's appeals and disbursement of $47,623 incurred in Kiri's appeals, amounting to total around $227,000 $623. With that, I would like to, to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of B. Suresh from Burang's Financial Services. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, good, good morning, sir. Giving the opportunity. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, sir, uh, last call, I am last conference call, I am asking, sir. This is the final judgment to uh, July 16th. Uh, you can do it. But uh, uh, again, you will give the uh, postponement. What is the uh, issue, sir? Final judgment. So the judgment from the Supreme Court is a final judgment. But what, what Court of Appeal, which is the Supreme Court of Singapore, has done, has, has directed the SICC to give an effect to the decisions taken by the Supreme Court. So, so to give that effect, the court process is SICC going on. There is no... So, 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 so when the SICC, um, SICC does the computation and gives the final number of valuation, that is in connection with the Supreme Court order. That is, that is to, to give an effect to Supreme Court order. So it is in continuation of Supreme Court order. So this is a final judgment and it is part of the final judgment, I would say. Um, there would be no further judgment as per se 
for the valuation. So this would be this would be an end of the legal trial, in fact. Uh, sir, if the SICC, if the valuation, any change of uh, valuation changes is happened in in the case uh, valuation issue. Right. There would be a, there would be two points. There are two uh, appeal points which were considered and accepted from Kiri's side by the Supreme Court, and they overturned those two points in Kiri's favor. So those two points will add a significant amount, which would be um, uh, instead of 480 to uh, 81.6 million dollar, now this amount would be north of 600 million dollar. So it would be a significant increase in the award to Kiri. Uh, so actually, uh, after the SAC decision, you can give the final judgment to the Supreme Court of Singapore. Right, so Supreme Court of Singapore has directed SICC to give an effect to the Supreme Court's decision. So SICC is just following the instructions of Supreme Court to 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 give this number to us. Uh, sir, and and is what is and is general investors we cannot understand the, uh, these issues, sir. In a money control in some market room as uh, Kiri is uh, uh, not received that money, that valuation is not come. So many uh, issues in uh, market rumors. Sir, one minute, sir. We will give the clear, we will give the clear picture of case issue in the uh, in the website or Kiri or exchange. Uh, finally, uh, what time you can take, sir, final judgment and do Money will come what time you can expect it and is they give the clear picture of investors sir and a no doubt about it in the Kiri issues. You will give the clear picture sir please. Uh, please and a misguide of investors uh, you will give the clear picture sir. Please you can understand sir. I, I feel yeah, number I let, let me address your question. Uh, number one the I would I would like to encourage you to read the judgments, right? And if you, rather than depending on the rumors on money control or anywhere else, um, if you go through reading the judgments, you will know what what is happening and what Supreme Court has decided. Number two, uh, we already disclosed um, uh, that you know that that there would be a short write-up to be submitted by both the parties on 26th of August, and. And, and that would get 20 pages right up from both the sides, and then and then SICC would 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 give a judgment. It may take another three uh, three four weeks time. So so practically uh, we are expecting the judgment to come, giving the number by end of September, right? And post end of September, the the recovery process will start. So. Um, what I mean recovery process will start, which means the enforcement process will start. So we'll try to ensure that the funds are realized as soon as pos possible post-September. Uh, funds, so what time it can take, sir, after September ending? Well, there is not, uh, see, the money is due the day this order is out, and money is due even today, correct? So, so Senda is already running in default in paying Kiri for more than a year without having any stay on the earlier orders. So that means that money is due immediately. And, immediately. and there is no stipulated debt here. So we hope that once the judgment is announced, Senda should pay immediately after that. That is our expectation. Immediately you can receive the money, you, your expectation. After, uh, as per the court order, as per the court order, the money uh, is due uh, immediately. After uh, 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 court order, you can expect a September ending, you will complete the clear teacher. Correct. 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 Uh, sir, one thing, sir. Uh, out of the court issues, you can state the market sale or any other company can stake. That type of events will not happen in, in the issues, sir. Uh, who's, who's stake you are referring to? Okay, actually, a die star stake, Kiri die star stake, you can 
sold in uh, uh, open market or out of court uh, market you can uh, you are not right we cannot because the shares are subsidized there is no it's an it's an unlisted company that sir is not a listed company a uh, unlisted company you can uh, uh, take a private equity uh, offer or uh, the type of you can so uh, no. no we cannot because the shares are under court order the shares are to be bought by senda and kiri is bound to sell to senda that is the order okay. uh, 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 after court order you can uh, give the senda ante not senda you can offer any other uh, companies you cannot sell sir if if senda defaults and if senda Uh, 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 if senda is not honoring the judgment then uh-huh. then we will see what to do at that time but we hope uh-huh. and we expect that senda honors the judgment honor the judgment you can hope senda if you cannot honor you can sold uh, after private equity uh, that time you can expect any huge, uh, huge amount or senda is a better better option we we have not contemplated or analyzed such things what you are saying we our thinking and 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 the the process is pretty straight for us kiri shares are to be sold as per the court order to senda and senda is bound and and compelled to buy kiri shares honoring the supreme court judgment so so there is nothing else to think about currently we do not want to there is no point in 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 putting cart before the horse right now let us see what happens uh, uh sir our uh, business is side right, question uh kiri next quarter we can improve the business sales or profit margin in the stand alone yes the current quarter would be i mean the second quarter f523 seems to be a better quarter and improving quarter correct Uh, sir fci has uh, sold some shares in kiri uh, shares in fci fci is in them market disclosures of fast sast exchange uh, oh, uh, yeah. uh why sir then fci is you can uh, sell the shares that is the reason i think anybody can sell share whenever they want to sell share <laughs> we are not as a as a company here to to ask somebody why is somebody is selling share or somebody is buying share that's not our subject matter uh, after receiving money you can increase the stake in kiri sir um we will we'll see will uh, promoters are quite keen to increase stake and and you will see you will see in, in future okay okay sir you can hope a better judgment i will come i can uh, uh of uh, future in kiri is very bright is uh, expecting uh, thank thank you, thank you to thank opportunity you. Mm. Thank you. colorful the next question is from the line of jay bhatija from jv investments please go ahead uh, good afternoon sir uh, good afternoon i have a couple of questions my first my question is what are the bets that you have on book currently what are the sorry i couldn't get you that that level on our book or oh, that level in the book has been reduced actually um so current uh, that level is uh, 50 53 crores um and and which would be also paid back um, uh, repaid by end of september and uh, so how do we plan to repay by the cash flow generated from the businesses or some other sources we are expecting the cash from flow from from external sources entire 53 crore is being paid from the external sources okay and so second question is regarding the business our business is quite weak in this quarter as you explained me due to the china issue so how is the business going on this quarter uh, as in in quarter 2 as quarter 2 will be completing in two days right so quarter 2 is much better than quarter 1 and and quarter 1 was one of the worst quarters we faced mm-hmm. um, industry issues were there um, the legal cost was also high 
so because of that we uh, we had um, bad performance in quarter 1 but quarter 2 is much much better as we speak so th there would be a drastic improvement in quarter 2 so quarter 2 will be better because of the legal fees getting down or the business also improving as in last quarter we had told about uh, legal expenses are somewhere around 60 to 70 crores right so uh, business business is better demand is coming better in quarter 2 and at the same time relatively uh, the legal expenses would be lower. So, so what is get? the legal expense we can expect in this quarter? Last quarter it was close to 16 crore. This quarter we are expecting at least 5 to 6 crore. Let us see. Okay. okay. And uh, regarding this, uh, the court case with uh, Tenda, so the only issue is pending the license fees. So what is the amount which Kiri is quoting and Tenda is quoting? What is the quantum of difference between both the companies? Right. So the earlier judgment, which was overturned by the Supreme Court, uh, was uh, was with consideration of Senda's value, Senda's amount, which was one million dollar, hmm. and and Kiri's uh, Kiri's uh, side, uh, the valuer appointed by Kiri, uh, presented the amount of forty million for Kiri's stake. Four zero or one four? Four zero. Four zero. So the patent license fee range is from one million to forty million. So it could be the number that judges decide uh, bit, uh, in between this range. Okay. And how well is Senda prepared to obey the judgment on cash levels as well as their business? How and how well Dystar is performing currently? Dystar's performance has been quite well. Um, Diestar's cash level is very high, no loans in Diestar. Um, we see the cash levels in Diestar more than $400 million. Um, at the same time, we also see a lot of cash sitting in Longshin too. So I think, um, I think financially, both uh, Longshin and Diestar are strong enough to honor the judgment. So they have about 600 million on their books because earlier our judgment was 480 now considering without uh, this uh, license fee also our judgment is near 600 yes right. right so they are well prepared to pay about 600 once the judgment is out you see the books and books has enough financial ability to yeah according to the books only correct yeah okay thank you Ladies and gentlemen, I would request all the participants to limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yogesh Tiwari from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Tiwari. We are not able to hear you. I would request you to use your handset to ask a question. Uh, yeah, am I clear now? Please proceed. Uh, good morning, sir, and thank you for taking my question. Uh, I had one question. I had one question on uh, the uh, dye stuff and dye intermediates. Uh, as you told that, uh, no, there has been a lot of dumping from uh, China. So, if you can help uh, to understand the industry dynamics, uh, that is, what is the demand supply in the Indian uh, dye stuff market? and how much is imported from China and what would be their uh, cost of production versus that of Indian manufacturing. Right, um, so, so if you look at the overall demands of dyes, which is driven by demands in textiles, and just to analyze the, the exports which is taking place from India, um, it was in the range of, especially for reactive dyes, which is the major category of the business, from January to March onwards, average around 18 to 20,000 tons per month. And if you analyze the data in the last two to three months, um, you would see that that has dropped to 12, 13, or 14,000 tons. So there is a reduction of at least 20% to 30% um, in the exports out of India for dyes. Uh, so that is where the demand uh, has hit. Now. Um, now, on the other side, um, if you look at the major intermediates, which are the inputs 
for dyes have been having very fierce competition from China. Just to give you some example, two major intermediates, H acid and vinyl sulfone. H acid Chinese price have been almost 50 to 100 rupees lower than the cost of production in India. And because of that, lot of plants, majority of the plants had reduced their production in the last quarter um, uh, significantly. And, and, and the reason for that is Chinese intermediates input prices are lower than Indian intermediates input prices, especially prices of caustic, price of sulfur, prices of soda ash, those are the input prices of aniline, those were lower in China compared to India, uh, allowing them to have an advantage of their lower cost of production compared to India. And, 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 and if, you, if you just compare, for example, sulfur price, India was in the range of 42 rupees to 46 rupees in the last quarter, the quarter one FY21. And, and at the same time, the sulfur price in China was 30 rupees. Now sulfur price in last two, three weeks suddenly dropped to only 14.5 rupees. So it has become one third. And it's a very huge volatility um, which, which we have been seeing. Similarly, the prices of caustic, which is another major inputs in H acid as well as other intermediates, have been prevailing significantly higher in India, uh, close to 60 rupees, while, while that is lower in China. Um, soda ash price in India touched last quarter close to 50 rupees which has now come to below 40 rupees, close to 36, 37 rupees. So some of these raw materials are now tapering down in current quarter. Some of them have crashed significantly and that would, that would stabilize the situation in this quarter, the quarter which is running. And, and we hope that we come near to the Chinese cost of production. That is how we have been um, uh, we have been uh, having our cost equivalent to Chinese cost um, in, in past several years, in past five, six, seven years. So we hope to slowly come back to that situation to regain our competitiveness um, in, in, in intermediates. So which is happening step by step. That is the main difference and that is the difference that has hit the industry. Uh, and sir, it, it would be helpful if, if, uh, if, if you can share what would be the average cost of production for Indian uh, manufacturers for intermediates and Chinese manufacturers. Average would be okay if you can share that. Average right. So, so like this, this inputs which I talked about, if you look at the current average intermediate cost in India and China, that is having a difference of at least 15 to 20 percent. So, for, for example, if, um, if, if vinyl sulfone, aniline price, which is the key price, in India is 170 rupees, while China, which has been around 120 rupees. So, when you look at the reflective increase in the finished product cost, you would end up having 15% difference between the cost. So, depending on the product, it ranges from 15 to 20% which we hope that in current and the next quarter would um, would equalize or at least come near to each other. And sir, finally, uh, what is the current uh, working capital days and uh, what would be the target uh, in, the dye, dye, in the dye segment? Uh, if I particularly talk about Kiri, the, the working capital days which we have already announced, which is, um, which is right. So 197 minus 45. So it would be 100 and around. It is. It is around. Around you can say 150 um, days, which would which would come down to below 90 days in the current and the next quarter. Uh, thank you, sir. That's all from my side. I'll get back in queue. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Ahindra Naik from CMS Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. May I order? Yes. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kiri. My question is uh, regarding the judgment by Supreme Court. Uh, are you aware of any precedent where uh, a judgment has gone against a party and they have not paid and then they, uh, and the, they have had to take recourse to some measures to recover the money? Is there a precedent like that? Yeah, there are several uh, precedences, in fact. Um, if the money is not paid by the defaulting party, uh, there has been uh, evidence, there has been precedences of contempt of court, and there have there have been precedences where the uh, the asset at dispute is sold and the money recovered. So so there are such cases in the past, um, and and the precedences are not necessarily to be precedences in Singapore. So precedences in other. Uh, countries are also considered in Singapore International Commercial Court, right? So there are, if you look at the precedences in London, US, Australia, even the places where common law jurisdiction is there, uh, there are there are many many precedences where where the asset as dispute is sold, money is recovered to pay to the party who is suffering, and there are also many precedences you would see that the court. Uh, court has uh, uh, enforced contempt of court. Okay, and um, would there be a ballpark timeline for uh, such um, uh, uh, contempt uh, execution? I think that that differs on case to case basis. Yeah. Uh, but we don't have a ballpark, right? It would be a, a wide range. There is there is no ballpark. It may range from the actions taken within two months or maybe the action taken within six to eight months also. So it depends on each case. Um, and it depends on what what court uh, and what the judges, uh, you know, uh, analyze the overall situation on individual case-to-case -case basis. Okay, thank you very much. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amar Goyal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, hello, Mesh Kerry. Yes, I'm Hi, uh, thank you very much for uh, for the results and, and, and looking forward to the judgment finally. Uh, my, my question is about uh, what are we doing with the promoters buying? Because I think there's a, there's a, uh, there's lots happening with the results not coming up to, to the mark uh, where there's not much confidence was built up so far. Although we got a brilliant judgment, but we, we we didn't capitalize that, and especially the market is not looking keen. I, so are we are we building any confidence building measures to to? Uh, so we are trying to attempt uh, several things, and and one of those things is that we are trying to uh, disclose ha as much information as we can to educate the market. And trying to uh, trying to give um, the the most uh, uh, realistic and the factual information to the market, right? And as you may understand, that this this legal battle has been going on since eight years, and 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 eight years is quite a long time, even as for the Singapore standards. So what? So so we understand that that there is a there is a questions in the market about how long how long we keep patience till you know till the judgment is actually enforced and the Kiri shareholders get the rewards of the judgment actually. So our our efforts are maximum. That is the most important value creative event for the company. And we are continuously working on as early as possible because now legal battle has ended. Supreme Court has given its judgment and the enforcement process will start in a month or two. So how fast we are able to enforce um, the judgment, that would be our, our key priority. And promoters are doing, the management of the company is doing everything that we can. And that is that is within our control. That is number one. 
Uh, number two, we are also trying to increase the uh, the standalone performance. Try to improve that. Um, no doubt there are market forces against us, but still we are trying to improve the product mix to see where we can improve the standalone performance. Number three, you must understand the difference between Kiri and other Priya Go companies that there is a high legal cost burden that we have been carrying on year to year and which is still going on as we speak. And, and you can understand from the discussion that we are doing regarding the court matters, which are the maximum number of questions we answer, um, there, is, there, is, there is a legal expense and the cost involved with it. So, so we hope that when, when the legal battle saga ends, um, we also are able to save legal costs, which are being shaded out currently from the operations. So that is another uh, objective which promoters and the management of the companies are trying to to work upon. So these are the uh, these are the main points. And any other points, any other specific questions you have, we'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much for answering that question, sir. Uh, as the line of Mr. Goel has been disconnected, we move on to the other question, which is from the line of Jigal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Please Hello. Proceed with your question, Mr. Chikash. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hi. So I just want to ask: okay, once the money comes in, then how much money will be spent against uh, capex? Um, well, that that has not been decided yet, not crystallized yet, but there would be a there would be a significant. Uh, amount from the money which is coming would be invested for the new projects, let me put it this way, not related to dyes and intermediate industry that we have again uh, uh, mentioned earlier. And, 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 and the major uh, portion of the incoming money would be used for non dyes intermediate related investments which may include new projects, which may include acquisitions, which may include uh, whatever value, creative, uh, prudent investments that we can do. But could you give a ballpark figure? Uh, no figure can be given now. It would be just um, it would be just off the hook without any concrete uh, discussion at the board. I would not be able to give you the number. And anything on special dividend? Do you plan to give or no? Yes, we would plan to give, correct. Again, the number would be decided when we are near to getting, actually realizing the money. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you. There is a follow-up question from the line of B. Suresh from Buram's Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thank you for the, again, opportunity. Uh, Sir, you can give the uh, special dividend in Kiri uh, after receiving the money. Uh, can uh, uh, they, you can go for expansion and do dividend and do buying uh, and they increase the stake. And they, how much money can uh, diversify, sir? Uh, and they, so. Right. So giving back to shareholders uh, either in the form of dividend or buyback whatever we contemplate, uh, that number is not decided or crystallized yet. Uh, we, will, we will see how, how the market levels are. Um, there will be a discussion at Kiri's board level, and, and, then, and then we will come up uh, with, the, with, the, with the number. But currently, uh, there is no such number which has been decided. Sir, uh, actually, in, in any case, uh, in the case issue, uh, lower valuation of at, at least to a lower valuation, you can receive uh, at least minimum uh, amount you can expect it. And a seven hundred million dollars is a uh, can uh, valuation. But it, in in case of again of uh, any issues of Kiri, uh, at least lower valuations, how much you can get getting sir? I think I think only if we reverse the DLOM, it should be around 600, and then the license fee. So minimum should be 600 plus. 
600 million dollars plus at least minimum at any any circumstances correct that is what we expect that is what the company expect and that is what the numbers indicate ha uh, ante at least minimum any circumstances he can 600 plus he can expect correct correct okay sir can you uh, sir can give the clear picture of uh, investors of case issues sir you can give the exchange clear uh, clearly you can give that sir this is a um, humble suggestion see the number the number um well, the number to give to the to the stock exchange and to the disclosure what we have been doing is we these are our own estimations these are the management estimations based on the legal advice based on the numbers which are there 19% dlo and things like that but when when the number actually announced and given by sicc that would be the appropriate time we disclose and we inform market the actual number which comes okay okay you can uh, you can transparently humble request you can give the clear picture you can try to issue is uh, shortly close close it you can try sir you can try in uh, in, in issues uh, legal issues so so many years you can wait for investors and also in suffering from major losses right right okay. right 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 see we we all have been uh, having patience for almost 8 years as i mentioned since this legal battle has been going on and at the end of um, at the end of it we hope that the fruits are are uh, fruits are coming to to the shareholders as soon as possible can okay, i uh, uh, okay uh, okay sir thank you for giving the opportunity uh, i can expect at least uh, uh, september ending can this issue is closed can expect it sir yes yes it is what is expected correct Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the giving the opportunity. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. There is a follow-up question from Jay Batija from JB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I have one question regarding how much can we give? How much is the contribution in so the revenue? Mr. Batija, your voice is not audible. Uh, uh, is it audible? Right. Yes. Please proceed. Uh, my question was if you can answer how much contribution is revenue in the company by our major client sorry i couldn't understand you how much revenue how much revenue contribution is there by major client um see the uh, let us say the top 10 clients of ours of dice segment right would be contributing almost 50 to 55% of the sales of dies while for intermediate sale which is a major sell um, there is no such concentration it is all diverse uh, customer base uh, and it is being the intermediates being sold in the market not with a particular concentration of customers so it goes through number of customers there are more than 150 customers Uh, who buys kiris intermediates through through distribution channels so there is no such concentration in intermediates but but yes in dies around 50 to 55% of the top 10 customers okay. thank you thank you thank you as there are no further questions i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you to all of you for taking your time and participating in today's conference call we will discuss with you next quarter thank you thank you very much thank you on behalf of kiri industry limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now